Hello and welcome to Auten Math. Today we're going to go through a very important uh, subject matter with congruent triangles. We're going to talk about three ways to prove triangles congruent. You'll find out that you'll use this information pretty consistently throughout the rest of the class. This will continue to come up in each of the ensuing chapters. Okay, so let's talk about the three ways. Number one, uh, we say the SSS postulate. So S stands for side, so the side, side, side postulate. And it says, if there exists a correspondence between the vertices of two triangles, such that the three sides of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding sides of the other triangles, the two triangles are going to be congruent. So in this case, I have AB congruent to DE. I have, by, noted, noted by the tick marks here, BC congruent to EF, and AC congruent to DF. So I know that if I have all three sides that are congruent between the two corresponding triangles, then I have uh, two triangles that are going to be congruent. Now you can try this out. You can create, you can, uh, create uh, three different, let's say, take a couple toothpicks and break them up into three pieces each. All the lengths um, are going to be the same and see if you can create two different triangles from two sets of uh, three uh, equal or congruent sides or lengths of the toothpick. So try that out, see how that works, and you'll see in the experiment that uh, regardless of what you create with those three pieces, if they're going to be congruent, then uh, between the two pairs, you'll have two congruent triangles. Okay, let's go on to the second postulate, but before we do that, let's talk briefly about included angles. So included angles are angles which are sandwiched between the sides of a figure. So in this case, <clears throat> I have uh, angle 1, which is sandwiched in between side CA and AB. I have angle 1, in this case, which is sandwiched between side AC and CB. And so I'm going to ask you, what is the included angle between AB and BC? So that's going to change depending on the figure and where AB and BC um, are located. So in this case, I have AB for the blue, AB and BC. My included angle is going to be 3. In this case, I have AB and BC. Again, in the black, my included angle is going to be 3. In the case of the green triangle, I have AB and BC. My included angle is going to be angle 1. So here at AB and BC, my included angle is 1. And then lastly, what is the included angle for AB and BC? In the red triangle, I have AB here, BC here. The angle sandwiched between the two sides is going to be angle 2. Okay, so an included angle is an angle which is in between or sandwiched between the sides of a figure. We need to know that for the second postulate. So the second postulate, SAS postulate, stands for side angle side. And the wording on the side angle side postulate, <clears throat> the official wording is, if there exists a correspondence between the vertices of two triangles such that the two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of the other triangle, the two triangles are congruent. Okay, so basically what that means is if you have a side, an included angle, and a side that are congruent between two triangles, then the two triangles themselves, all parts, are going to be congruent. Okay, so in this case, I've got AC congruent to DF, I have BC congruent to EF, the second triangle, and I have the included angle C and F congruent to each other. So I know that by the SAS postulate, the triangle ABC, and remember the order is important, is congruent to triangle DEF. So ABC is congruent to DEF. I could also say that triangle ACB is congruent to DFD, DFE, excuse me. But I remember I have to list the corresponding parts of the triangles in the relative order that they are um, congruent. Okay, one more topic to cover before we uh, talk about our third postulate for triangle congruence, and that topic is on included sides. So we had included angles and included sides. What is an included side? Well, it's just sides which are sandwiched between angles of a figure. So before I had an included angle, which was an angle sandwiched between the sides of a triangle uh, or a figure. 
In this case, I have an included side, and the side is the side that's sandwiched or in between the two angles of the figure. So in this case, if I wanted to figure out what side was uh, in between A and C, so I have angle A and angle C here, the side that's included between the two is going to be side 1. So in this case, I'm going to ask you, what is the included side between A and B? Between A and B, the included side is going to be 3 for the blue. A and B, the included side is going to be 2 for black. A and B, 3 again for green. And A and B, 1 for red. Okay, let's move on and cover our last postulate, or at least the last postulate for today. I should read number 3. The angle side angle postulate, and the official wording on that says, if there exists a correspondence between the vertices of two triangles, such that the two angles and the included side of a triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of the other triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Okay, so what does that mean? That means if I have two angles that are congruent, A and D, I have the included side, AB, congruent to DE, and then I have the second angle, uh, let's call it angle B here and angle E that are congruent. So I have an angle, angle, side, side, angle, angle that are congruent and the side is included. Then I have a uh, pair of congruent triangles. So angle, side, angle. So the first was side, side, side. So again, if I had three sides that were congruent. Second, side, angle, side. If I had the side, uh, the included angle and another side. And then finally, the angle side angle, if I had two corresponding pairs of angles, sides, included sides, and angles that were congruent, then I know that my triangles are congruent, meaning all corresponding parts of the triangle, not just the three that are identified, are going to be congruent.